Welcome to Electron Line, and here's a second example of how to use the Gaussian surface methodology using the Gaussian equation to find the electric field inside and outside, in this case, a cylinder with variable charge density. Again, it's not a uniform charge density, it's a charge density as a function of the radius away from the center. Notice when R is zero, there's no charge. When R is at the very edge of the, of the cylinder, you have a maximum charge density of C times the radius of the, of the cylinder. Now, we're going to take an infinite cylinder, even though I didn't draw an infinite cylinder, that's hard to do, of course, and we'll just take a section of it, assuming that, it's going on, that the cylinder goes on infinitely in both directions. Notice we want to find the electric field inside and outside the cylinder, so let's start with the Gaussian surface inside the cylinder, a distance A away from the center. A can be any variable, any distance from zero to the outside. Notice R is the radius of the cylinder. So the equation goes follow, follows the surface integral of E dot dA is equal to the Q inside divided by epsilon sub naught. All right, and that would be, of course, the charge inside the Gaussian surface. Now, in this case, uh, notice that we're going to ignore the edges of the cylinder. Infinite long cylinder, edges are relatively small compared to the length of the cylinder. Ignore that. We're only going to consider the Gaussian surface of the, the uh, side of the cylinder right there. And so this would be E times the area of the cylinder would be the circumference, which is 2 pi A times the length of the cylinder. So that would be the circumference times the length. <clears throat> that would be the area of that Gaussian surface, not including the two end pieces. And that would equal Q inside divided by epsilon sub naught. Now, to find Q inside, we're going to have to integrate because it's a non-uniform uh, charge density. So what we need here is we need a small little volume element. So what we're going to do is draw a little circle like that with a small little thickness dr. The distance out to there is going to be r, and then this distance right there, the thickness would be dr, okay? And then we have to, of course, continue all the way. I guess I go like this, all the way this way, all the way this way, all the way this way. So what we, in, in essence, have our volume element. Let me, well, let me write over here. My dv is equal to the, think of it as a pipe a small pipe with a very tiny thickness to it. And so the volume of that would be the area times the thickness. And the area would be 2 pi r, so 2 pi r, that's a circumference, times the length, L, times the thickness, dr. That would be the volume of that pipe inside the Gaussian surface. The dq, can then be found by taking the charge density, which would be C times R times dV. And then if we multiply those together, we get dQ is equal to C times R. C is just a constant, R is the radius, times dV, which is 2 pi R L dr. And that would be the dQ. I can simplify it a little bit more and write it as dQ is equal to, let's write all the constants first, 2 pi cl times r squared dr. All right, that would be the dq. And now we want to find all of the charge inside the Gaussian surface. I have to integrate from 0 to the edge of the Gaussian surface, a, which means that q inside is going to be equal to integral from r equal 0 to r equal a, wherever a happens to be, of the dq which is equal to the integral from 0 to a of the dq would be 2 pi c l r squared dr. And of course, 2 pi c and l are all constants. They can come outside integral signs, so I can integrate this. And this becomes 2 pi c l times r cubed over 3 when I integrate from 0 to a. So finally, we can say that the q inside is going to equal 2 pi cl uh, a cubed divided by 3. There it is. There is the q inside my Gaussian surface. All the charge between 0, r equals 0, and r equal a, the edge of the Gaussian surface. I can now plug that in here. I can now say that e 
times 2 pi a times L equal Q inside, which is 2 pi C L A cubed divided by 3. And I can't forget my epsilon sub naught. Simplifying things, I have a 2 pi here and I have a 2 pi. 1a cancels out with one of those, that becomes a squared. This l cancels out with that l. Doesn't matter how long a segment we consider. And so now we have the electric field strength is equal to what do I have left? C a squared divided by 3 epsilon sub naught. And if I want to write that into a vector format, I can write that E, which is a function of R, radially outward from the center of the cylinder, that is equal to C R squared over 3 epsilon sub naught times R unit vector. And that's how we would then want to write the final answer for the electric field inside the cylinder out to a certain distance A, or no, R equals A. All right, next we want to find the electric field outside the cylinder. And so for that we need a larger Gaussian surface all the way out here and down the pipe this way. All right, our equation will look exactly the same. It'll still be E dot dA equals Q inside divided by epsilon sub naught. Now the Q inside will be the same integral except for the limits will now be from zero to the edge of the cylinder, not to the Gaussian surface because there's no charge here and here. We only need to integrate for the charge out to the edge of the, of the cylinder. And so let's do that. Let's find the Q inside and I'll use blue to indicate. Do I have a blue pen here? Here we go. All right, so Q inside is equal to uh, all the little dQs from R equals zero to R equal R. So which is equal to 2 pi Cl times the integral from 0 to r of r squared dr, which is equal to 2 pi Cl times r cubed over 3, evaluated from 0 to r. And of course, we get this very same thing, except instead of having the integral ending at a, we have the integral ending at big R right there. So we have q inside is equal to 2 pi Cl r cubed over 3. So that would be all of the charge inside the pipe. Or I should say cylinder, not pipe, but the cylinder. Okay, so now we are going to have our second equation. So we have this equation right here for outside. So the surface integral of E dot dA is equal to Q inside divided by epsilon sub naught. And so E dot dA now becomes E times, remember, this is the surface of the Gaussian surface. So we need to go all the way out to the surface right here. So what do we call that? Well, we'll call that, where's my purple pen? There we go. So that would be, we'll call it A. We're going to go all the way out to A, the edge of the Gaussian surface. So it would be um, 2 pi A circumference, 2 pi A times the length L equals Q inside, which have right here, 2 pi C L R cubed over 3. And of course, don't forget the epsilon sub naught. Now the fun part, let's simplify things as much as we can. The 2 pi's cancel out, the L cancels out, but the A does not. So the A will end up at the denominator. So finally, coming up here, we can write that the electric field strength is equal to uh, C R cubed divided by 3 A epsilon sub naught. And of course, so that would be the magnitude. If we now want to write it in a vector form, we could say that E as a function of R is equal to C R cubed divided by 3 R epsilon sub naught. And of course, that would be in the radially outward direction. There we go. So you do see that the strength of the electric field does diminish as 1 over the distance away from the from the um, cylinder with charge. Now again, as a quick test, let's see if the two equations are equal to each other at the, if the Gaussian surface is at the edge of the, of the cylinder. So if A equals capital R or R equals R, so we plug in R here, we get R squared, C R squared divided by three epsilon sub naught. If we let R be big R, then R cubed divided by R is R squared, so that's C R squared over three epsilon sub naught. We get the exact same value at the surface. 
giving us a pretty good feeling that the answers are probably correct. And that's how we find the electric field of a cylinder with variable charge density.